If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> America's Blah, 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 of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection and put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track shivers or vibrations and stuff like that Okay, guys, welcome back to our America show. We are going to be chatting with Michael Ryder the second a little bit later about the gin. So it's a fun stuff in and around that about him maybe taking a gin and turning it into a. <laughs> no, 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 just turning it. Well, to me, it's turning it into turning and turning it into the same thing. It's like taking a bad guy and turning. Well, no, it into it's a good guy. It's like like I was saying, it's like spycraft, right? Like you go to Russia. And you turn one of their agents, you turn them into a good guy. Yeah. Turn and turn into mean the same thing. Unless you're talking about turnover, unless you're talking about flipping them on his head, <laughs> then we're talking the same language. It's fine. They have it. So we're going to chat with him a little bit later. Of course, if you don't want to hear our lazy ramblings, you can skip ahead by clicking the timestamp in the show notes. Um, Lazy round by bitch and complain about Amazon a little bit and then uh, get you into the interview a little quicker than usual. We have been working on some extra content over at Great America Outlawed, uh, that other podcast which you can find in your pod player if you just search for it, or you can go to greatamericaoutlawed.ca, find it there. But we've been doing sort of some news roundups there. We talk about some news stories, play some clips, and talk about what's going on in the world a little bit more and sort of blend we'll, you know, i think we're going to start blending more of this intro content sort of into that too and encourage you guys to maybe go over there and start checking those shows out and check out the Grand america outlawed shows and maybe we can explain a little bit of that because you know we <clears throat> we can chat we're in we're in perpetual strike mode and and we're not this show is is barely sustaining itself the main show and we have the Great America Outlawed show where we can kind of discuss more things freely. Like we're not on YouTube and we're not, uh, you know, we're kind of using that. We're on Rumble and these other platforms. We have a sub stack created for that too. So we can kind of talk about whatever we want over there and not really worry about it. Plus, we're not really like take we're taking away from the content of this show with with where we talk about UFOs and ancient mysteries and all this kind of stuff that doesn't really necessarily match with some of the maybe negativity or darkness of the dystopian stuff we talk about in the outlawed so that's kind of going to be more of our outlet for the chitter, chitter chatter and stuff like that we'll still do like an intro but it's i don't know if they'll be as comprehensive do you agree yeah with that? yeah well this show wouldn't be isn't sustaining itself really if it wasn't for our other ventures you yeah, know we'd go yeah. broke and it's Which not are, all about that i mean but it's just become more it, it's it's got it it's got to become they a hobby again or what? Well, those other ventures pay the bills in a lot of ways. Yeah. The bills, the bills still have to get paid. I mean, it's not, you know, it's funny. Cause once you grow, it's, it also, all your expenses grow with it. Everything grows with it. And if your support doesn't grow, then it's kind of hard. Gets tricky. Your hobby think. becomes expensive unless you try and make it a job. And if you make it a job, it becomes really hard. That's right. That's hunting season. All these other things, Colin. We want to come here and keep doing the show, but uh, you know, supports at an all-time low, which is kind of to be expected with us launching Grand America Outlaw. And I'm sure a lot of you have gone over there, and we appreciate that. So if you're over there, you're going to keep sort of getting that content anyway, and uh, it'll be good. Oh man, our last episode was great. It was with a Canadian that moved to Mexico. He's a uh... He's an old school like anarchist from Quebec, and he saw how kind of woke the anarchy became. I mean, he started; they started to suppress his articles, pushing back on COVID and stuff. And so they started up their own media company. It was really interesting. Long episode too, like two hours and fifteen minutes or something. 
That's right. It was a good one. And then, of course, we got the roundups over there as well. And uh, since we're on hiatus with getting paid from our audiobooks over at Amazon, we're maybe looking at different outlets for how we're going to deal with getting those out. Moving down the road, we got some ideas. So we'll have some update on that down the road. We're kind of in hiatus and under contract until this is figured out over the next couple of weeks to a couple of months here, which, you know, has left us, you know, way short on a lot of things. So we're trying to pick up the pieces, scrape that together and figure out a way to increase revenue in other avenues. Um, which includes more content for the more effort into those avenues that are returning. Whereas on this show, like I say, support is right now at the lowest it's been since we started taking support, which of course was to be expected from some people switching over to outlawed. We appreciate that. There hasn't really been that many, you know, it's really only a few hundred. So we're, we're at crossroads. We got to figure out where the, best place to put our energy is if people are, are even listening anymore. Actually, thinking back, Michael asks in this episode, it, it was kind of like just, we recorded it maybe last week or the week before, and I think a lot of this stuff had just happened. I mean, my rent increase went from over 50% increase in my rent. I think that it all happened, and I started unloading on Michael, and then he's like, yeah, well, that's what's happening, the new energy right now. Like, he kind of had some good advice and explanation for what's going on, so... I'm sure other people are feeling weird shifts and changes in energy and other things, and we're just trying to fucking get through it without, without Gramerica falling apart, really. That's right. Yeah, trying to hold it together at the thing. So it's hunting season, so that's been good. I've been having a good time hunting. I'm going to get back out this week. Yeah, you got to see Paul next week. Shout out to Paul up in Jasper. I'm going to hang out with him. One of our big supporters. I'm going to stay at his uh, vacation rental for a couple yeah, of days. Awesome. With Sean and... Uh, you going to hunt up there? Cassandra. No, he can't. It's a national park. I mean... No, I saw some I will, pictures. I will, I'll hunt in the provincial park just yeah. because, uh, well, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. But uh, a national park seems pushing it, and I don't need the bad press. I'm already the most censored Indian in Canada. Yeah. How was your last hunting trip? You, you did good. Did you? Uh, yeah, I did, you did an antelope. Bow? I just finished processing an antelope today. But with a bow or? No, with the right with my uh, assault rifle. It was fun. Yeah, you were saying something in the chats about how how happy you are with that rifle. It's a good rifle. Is that? I'm gonna take the new rifle out this week. Oh, okay. And get it. So getting right into it, it's going to start getting crowded out there real soon. So it's time to go up there and mop up in some some of the places I hunt and move. Get ready to move on to some other ones. And I didn't get to do nearly as much duck hunting last year as I like to do with the Egypt trip and all that. I'm prepping shows before the Egypt trip, everything else that was going on. So uh, is that a pretty limited season, the duck hunting? Yeah, it tends to be from the time the migration starts to the time everything fucking freezes solid. <laughs> can be short depending on the fall, so I want to get on top of it right away, right when it sort of opens. So and that's in about that's only in a month till the to the bird seasons really start to open. So I want to be done most of my big game by then, except for the elk that I'm saving for my going back to the base. Cool. I'm bringing a British and a Yankee. If anybody's interested in D&D books, I'm probably selling all my D&D books. Got a whole whack of 3.5 and some 5 edition. I know there's some D&D players out there that are listening. Let me know quick, though. I'm going to try getting them, rid of them pretty fast. Probably like $1,500 worth or more. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a lot of D&D books. Yeah. Anyway, check out, check out GrabAmericaOutlaw.ca. I'm sick of chirping for support. I'm not going to bother. Seems pointless. Um, you got a bio? You said you don't have a bio. No, but I want to talk about their, they they have their new Instagram or their Instagram accounts. They're just kind of getting themselves out there. I think they're going to make a website and stuff, but check out their stuff. Um, Instagram, both links are in the show notes. New World Shaman and Andromeda Joy 22. 
And I do have uh, some UFO quotes because that's still a pretty fascinating topic right now. Lots going on in the UFO world. It's really, really fun to see what's going on here. I don't. So who, who, who said this? No, I mean, no matter what side you're on, it's, it's amazing to see. There's a bunch of people believing the government. There's a bunch of people not believing it. There's a, it's like, it's fascinating. A bunch of our old guests piping in, a bunch of our friends piping in. It's, it's pretty interesting. I'm just ignoring it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just sort of from that. Burning man, I feel like. It's like what? It's like you've got a burning man thing to it, you know? It's Whoa. kind of real. It's kind of just not. That's interesting. It's like this weird sort of, I don't know, corporate sellout on UFOs. I don't you know? It just yeah, all yeah, yeah. Okay. thing gross. Well, yeah, but that's what's so fascinating about it. Because I... Somebody just almost quoted me. How is the phenomenon going to react to this? That's the main question. The phenomenon is real. Whatever it is. Like Michael talks about it in this episode. So who said this? Who said this? Roswell. Okay. This isn't, this isn't, who said this, but it's not a real person. Roswell was a smoke screen. We've had half a dozen better salvage operations. Fox Mulder. Close. Deep Throat from the X-Files. Oh, it was an X-Files. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you just, yeah. just quote movies now? I guess that's okay. Okay, well, here's another one. While experimenting with a wireless power plant, I obtained extraordinary experimental evidence of the existence of life on Mars. Is this a movie again? No, no, real person, but but not alive. Carl Sagan. Tesla. God. What, you think Carl Sagan saw saw life on Mars? You never know. (laughs) You never know. Can't rule it out. Ivan Sanderson always claimed, hell, he bragged. That he had originated ufology after the Air Force induced UFO, introduced UFO. Jay Keel to R. Hyden. So that was John Keel. Interesting. He's one of my favorites. We have an audio recording, or we have a narration of him talking to uh, Congress in, uh, I don't know, long, many, many decades ago on our YouTube, Adel Payne YouTube channel. Back in the 60s, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Might have been 50s even, I was thinking. But no, I think 60s is right. In the 50s. I don't think it was like U.S. Congress. I think it was a scientific investigation on UFOs back then. But it was his speech. Check out our Adult Brain YouTube channel. That would help. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. 1,000? We're trying to get to 1,000. Yeah. Then we could maybe do something there, but. Oh, it's only 1,000? I thought it was 2,000. No, it's 1,000. Oh, we're almost, we're almost well, halfway there. Then go there. So go subscribe. And uh, I don't got anything else you. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy this chat. Maybe you can get your own chat. Right? I don't want to do it. I don't know. You don't? No. How okay. come? It's because I just don't. I'm not there. Hmm. What about, how is it different from a tulpa? Oh, well, Jin's like a. I mean, he said there's like a society of gins. A tulpa is like made from your consciousness, right? Or made from your intention or created, like manifested out of maybe a group intention even. We should get a tulpa. We could use a couple of tulpas around here. I was reading, a, there's a book on chaos magic that tells you how to create your own servitor, like a tulpa in a way. There you go. Probably end up out of control. I did. Maybe that. I mean, I did do that a while back, like a few years ago. Way to go. Maybe I should try and reel that in a little reel bit. Reel that thing in. All right, guys. Enjoy the chat. Michael Ryder the second.
Hey, Michael Ryder, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm pretty good. Yourself? Um, I actually not doing very good. <laughs> Maybe you might have some advice for me. Um, yeah, well, yeah uh, it, it's been a fucking hell of a week. Like probably. Probably the worst week of maybe of my life. I mean, it's getting pretty bad. Yeah, it's um, yeah. it's uh, consciousness kind of working its way out. Um, there's a lot of lot of people are kind of making waves in that in that realm of that higher perspective. So you, you so? have a, yeah, you have a lot of th you have a lot of things going on. You have you know the Hunter Biden thing kind of coming out and falling on its face, and then um, you have this whole UFO thing coming out with a lot of information about technology. And what they can do, who they, some saying who they are, stuff like that. So you kind of have this this gambit of things. And there's a lot of financial things going on. Um, this Sam, uh, what was it, the FTC thing? Um, I think they're dropping charges or something like that. That's why really? I saw on the tweet. Um, I but could be wrong. That, but but why does that affect us personally, though? Because um, you're you're in consciousness. You're in the you're in time and space. You're you're effectively walking around. You're effectively a, a time vehicle. So you harness it. You kind of live through it. That's that's what it is. So you're the ultimate expression. So you kind of you know feel it, or in it, you know experiencing it, and that's what our our uh, the the consciousness I guess wants us to kind of feel in these these times because it's it's crazy energy. Even coming off the sun, there's there's crazy energy coming off the sun that we're not, you know, looking at and why this heat wave is happening. Um, there's all kinds of stuff happening and it's, well, dude, it's I mean, massively affecting us. I didn't even want to like I didn't expect to get into this, but I mean, since we're <laughs> talking about it, I mean, like it's it's just a weird like things are breaking down, right? Like, yeah, yeah they are. TV, TV. Yes. Uh, like dishwasher, two cars, um, uh, the fireplace, uh, landlord, like like trying to jack up the rent by like 50%. Um, yeah. Like, like massive stuff breaking down, like, like breaking down. And it's um, like, and it's the same week that the UFO disclosures happening, which should be like one of my best weeks. I mean, we've got like lots of, uh, lots of awesome, coming out. Awesome stuff going on. Right. What? So this is, this is, um, this is kind of time breaking down around itself too. We're moving into a new, new era. So a lot of this, a lot of this energy that is, was present during this um you know astrology is a big thing with this um this capricorn and pluto sort of thing is kind of breaking down so you have a lot of stuff moving into this new age this new thought pattern this new energy um this 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 new th experience so people so how have do to we, break down these these paradigms so how do we do how do we do like is there i because uh, i have been sort of like just like trying not trying to stay calm and go like, what's the lesson here? What's the test? Yeah. Is there like some test or lesson? But I mean, like things are just hitting us fucking hard. Like, yeah, they are. They're, they're hitting you in the gut and they're keep on, they're kicking you when you're down and there's, they have a steel toe boot and they're about to curb smile. You. Um, so it's, um, it's hard. Um, a lot of people, you know, like to, you know, lean on the aspect of, you know, right ritual and, and ceremony for that. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, I'm going to try to, you know, keep it kind of esoteric a little bit, but kind of break it down in more of a um, mundane way. So every day you get up, you go to work, you brush your teeth, you do these things that have a ritual for success in your life. Um, it's the same way for spirituality, if that's what you want to call it, consciousness, um, the way you affect yourself and people around you. Um, that's that's simply put. Um, you are a manifestation engine and that's that's how you, um, you know, you kind of get to it. Um, a lot of the stuff that I deal with, um, I help people, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, the knowledge side of dealing with hallucinogenics and psilocybin, maybe mainly um, people that have used that in the past. I've spoken with them and helped them, you know, get to you know different levels with it in their inner healing. A lot of the times, um, a lot of this stuff is based off of uh, a trauma and how we experience it through incarnation. Um, incarnation, it's not reincarnation in my mind, it's incarnation because time doesn't exist when you're making that decision to come here. So you actually incarnate into um, 12, um, you know, six men, six women, um, with a 13th maybe there for a little bit of a summer school or, you know, something you have to do. Uh, so that's a lot of a lot of it in that way. And I'm kind of staying very brief with a lot of it. Um, just because there's a lot to go over in, in doing sessions with people and how they want to, 
heal from that, not just their trauma and this this experience and expression, but other ones that they've had in their other incarnations. So, I, I mean, you mentioned right rites and ritual and ceremony and what i've been thinking is one thing i have i have my spiritual practice is not like mm. no like i haven't been meditating lately I haven't been that like sort of my my like normal sort of which has never really been like super dialed in like as far as like a ritual goes i've sort of shifted mm. it around and all but there's there's like lately there's been n- none of that yep. and i'm like does that have something to do with it like i i personally think it does um i even had my own kick in the butt recently and um that's that's been my savior in that same sense so you know getting back to that and getting back to your your basics of what you really value in life and everything that is there for you um once you accept it um that's that's it i mean there's no i mean you can it's one of those things where you can say you know lead a horse to water in that same sense um you got to be able to show people you got to be able to get people to feel it you got to be able to get people to hear it it's it's not just hey i'm going to tell you how to do it it's you know we got to do it together um it's one of those things a lot of the times and what i deal with on that on that side of things and is more of a physical manifestation of a person because we're we are a manifestation engine so a lot of people um talk about these these dark things right these things that jump out of bodies that you know attack you um i've had my own experiences in doing this quite a few times and have had some pretty scary situations um so and this is dealing with you know a lot of um that other side of things that you know people don't really want to discuss that's now kind of coming out um and we're starting to see things in the media starting to see these these things for what they are and who they are and kind of it's it's leading us to ask questions so that's what i think is going on right now a lot of people are asking questions and it's kind of stirring up this chaos of consciousness and it's and and my point of view being being what i can see and stuff like that it's like peaks and you're kind of if you're flying you're really above consciousness and you're looking at it it's just constant peaks and bombs of things going off and people discovering stuff and certain things here and certain things there and people are searching so people are you know they want to they want to figure out what happened to us um and this is an old problem from different cycles and stuff like that you know i think it's hundreds of thousands of years old um not just a couple thousand years old like they're kind of putting out there um and i think they they've kind of been here for a long longer and we've been here for a lot longer than what people are kind of putting out there and um there's a lot of evidence pointing towards that can you talk about some of those dark, like you talk about what's coming out like in the media more lately and the darkness and dark um, coming out of people and stuff. I mean, I've heard of some of that in the, in the, uh, in the shaman, in the, uh, in the, the ayahuasca shamanic sort of uh, healing ceremonies where like dark entities will actually literally like come out of people. And yeah. So um, there, it all depends on what they are. Um, I look at it from cycles so some people say hey it's more of a um it's more of an alien or more of a demon or more of this or more of that it's a it's a consciousness it's a it's a thought it's a um it's a presence it's are you energy. saying it's a consciousness a thought a presence or? yes in some in some cases it is it's a it's a it's in some way it's it's a way of of the person actually giving the hooks to allow that allow that to dig in and project itself. Um, some things like um, like gin, on the other hand, are something that are, in some regard, more physical than others. Um, s- some actually will go and be sick. Uh, you know, you go set them on people. You go get out. You tell them to go get things. Um, some people are haunted by them. Some people have made deals with them. Some people have deals for them stuff stuff like that i've met a few people in the past few years actually that have different types um um just in passing uh you know one guy i met he um he had a a green one that was very slimy and very very nasty thing and i asked him hey do you want me to take that from you he goes no i use it and i all right That, that's your own personal personal thing um so it all depends on on the scenario and situation with the person um i utilize mine to get get other bad things out of places doing clearing stuff like that 
You do, yeah. And how do yeah. how do you? I mean, of course, like that's my main, you know, my main concern. Of course, like when you when you we're talking about the show and what we're gonna do, and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. well, we'll talk about angels and gin and how I use yeah, them. Right. I'm like, I'm like, um, you know, well, let me, let we're, me, we're let pretty me. skeptical about like trusting those kinds of things, right? Yeah, right. And sometimes so, um, I'm like, be careful with, be careful with, uh, you know, exactly discerning anything, kind of, you know, yeah, right. So um, this kind of goes into a lot of that. Um, how I look at this is, is kind of higher keys and lower keys um, of the mind, right? So you're a manifestation engine. Um, I'm, I'm personally, um, as a kid, I've always had been able to see things. I'm a physical medium in that sense where I have to physically interact with it. It physically interacts with me. So I get touched, I get visions, I get all these kind of little weird things. And um, from there, it kind of, it kind of escalated and, I was able to, you know, manifest this thing that was given to me um, to be able to pull these things out of places and stuff like that. Um, higher keys are much like angels, stuff like that. Um, they're more of the the topper, the higher end of the, of the mind in the sense of frequency, vibration, stuff like that. And it allows you to um, move around in the, for lack of a better term, hyperspace, um, that that aspect of it and kind of conduct yourself properly in hyperspace because these things that are floating around are all powered by the mind and it gets dirty up there if you don't know how to properly you know con- contain yourself and conduct yourself in that manner so these things that are that are out there they get pissed off and they they come at you um sometimes it's it's this um there's a lot of this aspect of, of the lizard, the, lo- the lower portions of the mind, stuff like that. This um, aspect of of these alien lizard creatures, right? So there's something that's there and trauma based that's programmed in our mind that um, I've kind of experienced myself in a in a serious, and believe me or not, in a physical way. So that that really opens up your eyes to these other portions that are there, much like the the bug aspect that. Cliff High talks about, or like a, like we were just talking about David Ike stuff with you know the the lizard, and I think Freeman talks about the the fish people stuff like that, the Namu, and kind of goes on from there. So a lot of these things have always been here. Um, so they just didn't incarnate in this cycle, and they kind of sit at that edge, and they're very strong mentally, and they're able to push and pull certain things. So if they are invading in that space, they will energetically suck that energy out of you. Um, they can make contracts with things. They can they can do this stuff in the physical world just because you give them the power to do that. How do you discern then? Like, how did you discern that that one was good and it's going to help people? Um, or did well, you answer that? I don't think you answered that yet. But. No, I didn't. Um, so the idea that you know mine was to turn him. That was the whole basic of why I had it. Um, was to turn it and to use it for a proper way. So that took a lot of work inside here to do that. And that's Is it a gin? Do you call them a gin? Yeah, yeah. There's different levels of them. Um, there, there's about five levels of them, um, and they kind of go in in pecking order. They have a whole society. It's a whole thing with it. Um, they. There is smokeless fire. So when they were they were created before the the angels actually were, um, and they were they have free will, and that's the the difference between them really and the angels. They can actually the some of them can actually mimic and imitate them because they have the free will and they know how to put off light. So this goes into discernment and understanding what you're talking to when you're doing, you know, those types of sessions and stuff like that. So, you know, I personally learned the skill of looking for seams around these things because they'll project themselves. And if you look for the seam around the side, you can and you can move around, you can project yourself in a certain way, you can du- conduct yourself in hyperspace, you can do that. And what what if you find a seam? Uh, you, you, you tell it to get you, you leave. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's good. not something, it's something that's projecting itself, not in a, in a good way. If it has to hide what it is oh, with okay. that then yeah. you don't want to mess with it. You really don't. And that's where you know, I I help out in that sense, where I create a space for you to explore in that sense. Um, I help, you know, navigate that and give and help give discernment. 
um, especially with uh, the Reiki practice that my wife and I have and stuff like that. We, you know, make sure you're right before you go in um, because you, you get you get a little turned around when you do your your initiation sessions and stuff like that. So we kind of skipped right over like you because we went right into <laughs> my my issues. So maybe you can. Right. Tell us a little bit about the ba your background and how you got into this then. Um, yeah, so my background was actually in um, video production for 20 years. Um, I did that for a long time and got you that that nice little promo video, which I hope you guys really liked. Yeah, it was awesome. Cool. Um, and then, um, but during that that process, um, growing up, there was always something, I hate to say it, but weird thing. Um <laughs> I uh, I could see them. I could see these things on the other side. I could see certain certain people that passed over. Um, I was always kind of um, dealing with them um, my own way. And uh, you know, got to high school, found out that you know, uh, you know, this thing isn't really talked about. So you you kind of stuff it down, stuff it down, stuff it down. And then you know, it kind of built up. And what had happened? You know, I had a lot of trauma happen to me as a child, and. I actually popped out of body and it allowed things to attach, allowed all these things to happen. And when I kind of figured it out, I understood that, Hey, I'm a, I'm a physical medium in that sense. I have to kind of, you know, purge it out, get it out, you know, unload it after a while. So once a month I started using, um, psilocybin in that sense. And, uh, started really purging it out, started, you know, working with these things, getting, um, getting information, you know, finding out why they're, they're here, you know, crossing them, stuff like that, learning how to do all this stuff myself. Um, and then, um, I was, uh, probably around the time that I actually started listening to you guys back in like 2015, I was, uh, kind of in transition between, you know, businesses and stuff like that. And uh, I just kind of had it. I kind of had this like come to like, I don't know, like, what do you want me here to do? Like, I, I'm I'm seeing these things, doing these things. What do you want me here to do? So I uh, I did the whole, uh, you know, seven gram journey by myself and had a, a moment with the owl. So it's 12 foot with, owl with, talk, the, oh, with, the, with owl. the owl. OK, yeah. With the big owl people talk about sometimes. And uh, that was that was a kind of a, an interesting moment there. And uh, kind of set me on my path for a lot of other things that led up to, I guess, this moment in time, um, bouncing around, you know, looking at more and understanding and studying more about what this is, consciousness, and uh, what I'm here to do to kind of help facilitate the, the newer technologies like, like psilocybin and ayahuasca and even cannabis in that same sense, um, because they're all biological technologies that we lost you know traces of and were wiped out um because of what's kind of out there and how they kind of erased history from us wow can you talk about your owl experience a little bit more <laughs> that was um that was that was kind of crazy um so um i was kind of sitting there on my couch and there was there's was a lot of experiences actually leading and after that but this one was kind of like the 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 topper because like my my wife and my kids were actually um, at my father's house. My father was um, dealing with a lot of uh, issues at the time, and they would go over there. They would spend the night, stuff like that. I'd stay home, watch the dogs, and uh, that night I was just like, "All right, um, you know, this is this is kind of where I'm at. I want to figure out where I'm supposed to go, where I'm supposed to be." Um, and they were over there, and I was like, "All right, let's do it by myself." And uh, did my ceremony, did my ritual, put my intent out there, what I wanted. And I was dead serious with it. I'm straightforward with it, wrote it down, did these certain things of what I expected out of it. Um, in return, you know, this is what I was going to do, stuff like that, whatever I needed to do to help myself. Um, and it was, it was weird because we were sitting there on the couch with my dog and I heard this high pitch, like, I don't know, squealing. I don't, I don't, it, noise, we'll call it. And it just got louder. And my dog heard it too. And it was driving her nuts. And my other dog was just being lazy and she'd get up, bark, and then lay back down. But the other one was going crazy. So this was in the middle of the winter, snow everywhere, walk outside. And um, I'm trying to find out where this is coming from. And I hear this huge pop. 
and it just stopped. It got really, really quiet. And I live out in the middle of nowhere. And um, when it gets quiet out here like that, it just, it's, it's spooky eerie. Um, so I go back inside and I literally hear a hay and I turn around and there is this white 12 foot thing sitting there, big eyes. Um, and then what I would consider to be, you know, I guess the great chief in that aspect with it. White um, like, then, uh, like an apparition or white, like a white dude. No, like a, like an apparition of an owl. Like the, like if you were looking at it in like, th- like third eye, um, hyperspace that kind of aspect of it you'd see this this white golden um psychedelic owl essentially so you must have heard of like mike clell and stuff then if you've been listening to the show for a while um i've heard of him but i haven't really dived like dove into him or wait is he the guy with the all the owl books right yeah, yeah, yeah I, have, I have yes yeah. yes yes and that's what that was one thing that drove me to actually him because i was talking i started researching the owl trying to understand what the owl was I did. I did read his book, actually. And um, that's that's where I came to a lot of this stuff with um, the aspect of of extraterrestrials, what, what they consider to be extraterrestrials. I don't consider them to be extraterrestrials um, in that sense. But like they um, they it's it's kind of all the same thing because it's all, all the same consciousness. So they project themselves in, in certain ways. But this this was the the owl that i had experienced and um there were others below him that showed seniority in that same sense of what's above and what's below so now you're getting into a lot of the the hermetic stuff you're getting into a lot of the other teachings of it um and what those all those things represent so on this path that's that's how my path started was this conversation with the owl and the person he was going to send to me and um, he showed it all in metaphor. It was really wild. And like, I, I was in between jobs and like, I thought he was kidding. And like, the next thing he he sends me is the, this, this thing pops up in my email. Hey, you should check this out. And it led me to, you know, getting that six figure job that I was ultimately ending for, which kind of got really crazy too. So like, there was there was something to it because all the things that he told me leading up into it, manifested in some way or form in the language around the whole scenario so there was um it was it was a lot of lot of interesting stuff with that um but from there it allowed me to open up and figure out what the the thing that really you know this this gin that i have is and why i have him and why i'm able to utilize him to pull out these these nasty things and take these energies and how I see the karmic threads that actually attach to bodies. So like, for example, you know, you have seven energetic threads, which are part of seven energetic bodies that part allow you to operate in this reality. So being able to, you know, see those things that are attached to those energetic fields and pull them off, cut them off so that you can move forward with whatever you want to, instead of having these thoughts in the past um, and live in, you know, I'm going to use, I love what Cliff High is doing. Um, and I love his, his lexicon that he has and his vocabulary because he, he's pretty, pretty spot on with a lot of it. The, the ever present now. Um, that's a really, that's a really good concept for it because it's when you're out of time and space and using the, as the, the tools of hallucinogenics, you get a really good understanding of the ever present now because you're always trying to, to catch it. Right. So that's um, that's a big aspect of of what happened with that out was, you know, coming to him, asking what he wanted me to do, getting the information of what he wanted me to do and how it was going to unfold and then kind of go from there, jump in and say, all right, I believe you show me. And and he he did. He did. It did. Did he so. did he tell you that you had to turn the gin or did you figure that out on your own? I had to figure that out on my own. I had to do my own study and my own. It's it's weird. Um, I've had a lot of experiences. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I'm a I'm a I'm a tractor beam for the weird and um, you know, a walking ecto trap in a what same about, sense. <laughs> what about um, your wife? Same thing. Um, she yeah, somewhat. Um, she kind of keeps me grounded with a lot of it. Um, I use her as kind of like my uh, my sounding off post because I deal with a lot of lot of stuff in that sense. So I have to have someone there that that knows how to to work it with me. And she's very strong. She's very very good at what she does. She's a Reiki master. Um, she's a teacher. So um, I've learned a good bit of working with a hierarchy of I'm gonna use this in the sense of Raphael. 
um because it's it's a triage key for for energy and all these other things um to you know heal people in that same sense um and then there's other things in dealing with like incarnation um that you know she's better at and discerning than i am um with those higher keys and that's how we we really look at it did you um what was I going to say? We had these guys on from Australia who had the mushroom. They did this mushroom ceremony every week to help these mm. uh, alcoholics and addicts. And it's quite fascinating how much it seemed like they're really making some headway there. Um, yeah. What is your, what is your like ritual ceremony look like with other people and mushrooms? Um, it all depends. Um, I help people build their own ceremony and ritual. This is about you um, finding your magic, finding your inner self, finding everything about yourself. Um, I only give the guidelines and say, hey, draw from here a lot of the times. Um, you know, it's it's if they're looking for a lot of information, we sit and we do sessions. Um, I always do a Reiki session. So a lot of the times we go through and we make sure the person is, you know, right to to do the journey in that same sense, um, both mental, physical and everything that you know comes with that. So, you know, I'm a big proponent of not giving a gun to a child. Um, because that is how people should look at it. You know, it's a, it's a very powerful thing and you shouldn't, you know, jump into it that a certain ways, you know, even what I was doing in my experience, I was, um, I was building up to that a little bit too, before that I didn't just come in and just do a large amount. Um, I started off for years before that, you know, working with it, you know, trying to understand myself, understanding what I could do, why, why I was doing it, what I was seeing, stuff like that. So there was, there was work up until that point. And that's where I have to really stress that with people because you can't go and do that, that ayahuasca experience right off the bat. I don't think, um, you know, some people do, some people get a really good kick out of it and that's, that's the thing. But I think there's a lot of more internal work you need to lead up to do that in your right ritual and, and ceremony before you go do that because that's what sets you on your direction that's what gives you your mission your vision and your goal for all of it and your intent and will um that's that's a big thing in in projecting in manifesting your your reality that kind of you know echoes out from from you in that same sense because that that's all it is it's, it's a tool it's a technology to you know manifest things and to really you know pull on that that shadow side if you have that that work you need to be done that needs to be done you know universe is going to give you what you need to do in that moment for when you take that that antigen that hallucinogenic whatever you're taking so if you have something that's deep down i mean my first time when i did a hallucinogenic seriously i cried for six hours cried for six hours wept in my bed like a little baby um just because you know i didn't understand what i was going through and I had no one there to explain to me. And I'm I'm a freak of nature in that same sense. So I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that unless you're doing it with someone that is experienced. And, you know, once you get that those training wheels off, then, yeah, you can go out and you can do these things. You can, you know, astral project with them. You can do, you know, other things with them. Do you just so that was mushrooms the first time? Is it mushrooms every time? Um, I was using, I was using, you know, those, um, psilocybin mainly, um, it's a prolonged experience. Um, I have not touched, uh, DMT at all. I don't know if I really want to even do that. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've heard is pretty similar when you get into the higher doses of the psilocybin and it's, you're able to control it a little bit more or channel it a little bit more. It's not really control. It's more about channeling, um, and directing where you want to go with it. Um, the, um, other things, I mean, Cannabis has been used in the past for doing that. You can get pretty, pretty lit off that um, when you haven't had it in your system for a long time, especially when you eat it um, with RSO or, you know, other edibles. Um, but I've done LSD quite a few times and recently actually I've done that and it did not hit where I am used to working in my personal space um, with where it was in my mind. It just did not do. And I, and it was, it was, top of line stuff and it just it's, it's did not do it for me um so that was that was where i kind of was like all right i'm gonna focus on this aspect of it because i know what it does and how it how you can react from different uh, species subspecies stuff like that um because you can get that 
you know, with the, with certain ones, you can get that that being shot, you know, through hyperspace until you're in hyperspace, part of hyperspace uh, reaction to it. So, but that all depends on the the style of of um, you know fungus or you know mycelium or cubensis that you're really working with. You're going to get different results from from different things. Um, golden teachers, albino teachers, apes, different different structures are going to give you different things. Do you have a favorite? Uh, me, uh, yeah, I do. I, I I like I like the apes. I do super apes. Um, just because they give me I, the the full effect, I guess. Um, there are certain things that you want to use for visual tools. I'm a big visual person, um, so I want to be able to you know see, interact with whatever I'm dealing with. Um, I'm physical in that sense, so I I like to turn everything up to twenty two and uh you know bring down the walls so that's kind of how i uh, how i get about it other people not so much um you know for a beginner you know an avery or you know something very basic um you know something like a, a b plus you know something like that would be very easy for someone that to do two and a half you know whatever amount you know to kind of you know get them where they need to go um, the, when you get into the, the larger amounts, that's when it gets a little bit crazier and that's where you kind of have to, you know, be very cautious with that and, um, kind of proceed with, you know, with discernment again. Can it help with, uh, a bad week? Oh, yeah. Oh, it. I mean, you can. And that's the thing. I don't think it needs to be a, a spiritual thing in the same sense where it, it kind of is. Um, like I said before, it's a consciousness thing. It's um, you got to keep uh, what's that uh, sublime song? First, take care of head. What was that? Um, you know, that's that's a big thing. You got to first take care of yourself. So um, people use have used these things for a long, long time. And that's that's part of what I think has been lost um a lot of the dealing with uh, cannabis and stuff like that um that was part of it uh hemp was a part of it these these other plants that the uh, for example the vedic texts talk about you know there, i think there's 128 of them um you know these are very important things to humanity that you know we need to utilize and um i think that's a that's a thing that should be looked at especially from you know an idea of technology that's um different and a new way of looking at, at uh, consciousness and, re and reality. What do you think about the government regulating it and legalizing it? I mean, even psychedelics, like let's say MDMA, <laughs> yeah. mushrooms, mushrooms uh, LSD, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I boga, you know, even, I, the weed, I, I, even the weed too. Like, I mean, we have, yeah, this it's, it's a money grab. It's a money grab. Same sense. Um, I did actually a, a stent in the cannabis industry um, with a lot of, news and information and actually did a lot of stuff in Maryland when it was, you know, first coming around and there's some, it's, it's a money grab. I realized that really fast. Um, all of it's money grab. They're trying to really corner the market. And uh, I'm not a big fan of what maps is doing. Actually. <laughs> I don't like their process. I've seen their process with a lot of things and I'm kind of, you know, throwing them under the bus, but I just don't, I think it's too, um, too clean. Too, too clinical thing. or yeah. Too clinical. That's what I was getting at. That's what yeah, I was getting at. We it's, had, it's I, we had a, a friend uh, on the show. Well, she's a friend now. Limina, her name was, and she was mm -hmm. on her other other show, Outlawed, and she really kind of got me thinking about like the, this these, this process, like the mm -hmm. the government's kind of taking control through their sort of uh, yeah certification it's organizations and and having it sort of uh, you know legal in a clinical sense, um, not necessarily legal in a recreational sense problem solution right yeah so that's um that's where i kind of i mean it's all it's all going to be i think it personally it's all going to kind of come legal at some point um because that's that's the way it's going and i think um in some way this was kind of all put out there to do that because all of it's kind of coming out this whole kind of, kind of aspect of consciousness is coming out um in different ways of thinking about things so I think that's where it, it's it's all going to kind of be legal in that same sense eventually, um, because I think all this was kind of staged in that same sense personally, um, even with what, you know, funding with um, McKenna and all of, uh, uh, what was it, um, Timothy Leary and the acid and stuff like that. I feel like that was kind of put into society 
in a way so that they could, you know, eventually bring this stuff forward and operate the things that they're operating now. Like how, like how, how, how would that um, help? How would that, that help? Like so, with their propaganda, like would it, is because it opening it's, everybody it's, it's, up it's, to this? Or? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's essentially, it's, um, it's MK ultra on steroids throughout society. I mean, you're looking at it, um, you know, the, the biggest one I've ever seen that really shocked me was um, the old interviews with um, with uh, Charles Manson, for example. He says, I'm a product of society. And he, and he's right. I mean, in the same sense. And we're kind of seeing that, you know, evolve more and more before our eyes <laughs> every day. I mean, I was scrolling through Twitter and there was a woman on a freeway. I think I can't remember where it was, but she was completely naked and shooting people's cars like. What, what 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 what's that? What's that screen? I, that I thought of, I thought I just saw that before the show too, and I thought of MK, yeah. MK Ultra right away. I exactly. Thought, what and is going on? Like, and that's exactly what it is. And it's a breakdown because there's there was something really bad in our in our consciousness, and I hate to say it in the same sense, it was a foreign body to our universe, and that's where we kind of get into a lot of the stuff with um with cycles and understanding what's going on and how all this kind of relates to, you know, what's going on right now in consciousness and, you know, your energy, your fields, your everything. It's, um, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's not just spirituality, it's consciousness when you really start living it. What about, what about like our society on a bigger picture and from who's like running the thing? Like you mentioned the society of gins and we've talked yeah. about uh, like a black uh, force or a dark force sort of, you know, well, kind of uh, running the show at the top is, is there influence like on a, egregore level at the top kind of or? i mean we're, we're getting into like some really deep crazy stuff i was like trying to stay high level but like this is this is cool i, I enjoy this stuff um no i mean it's 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 dark stuff i mean you get into it you start really doing the research um i've done it myself i started out listening to you guys and listening to you know david ike and all these other people and i started looking for it for myself because i started seeing these things on that side behind you know these other you know spirit or whatever controlling them doing them like like having you know the the dreams having the the physical interaction with them in that same sense um so that's where it, it kind of like it it really hit home with me and having the the real interaction with it and a lot of this you know began uh with that same sense of you know jumping into the journey so a lot of this is is you know like i said um i guess a technology and and more once you really dive into it more so do you think do you think the elites that are that are under the same influence let's say do you think mm -hmm. they know did they know it are they controlling um, it like you are they just some, i mean some of them, i think some of them are i mean i think some of them pray to something that's not so good and that's why we um we're left with this it's it's a it's a um in lack of a better term it's a parasite um, and it invades in the thought process and the um, the other things that are kind of out there, um, because this kind of dives into the cycles and other things that, you know, live outside of where we can see in our in our sky. You know, there are these these other beings, but there I'm really starting to think that they're from here. I think a lot of this is all based around our planet for a reason. Um, I think we're kind of more of the cosmic seed to a lot of things. And I think a lot of things come here to incarnate and get educated and then go elsewhere off planet and then it cycles over again. So a lot of this stuff, you know, you're seeing is those old civilization technologies. I think you're seeing a lot of, a lot of that more so than, you know, what we would call it, what you would cons really consider to be space aliens in that same sense. Um, I think a lot of it comes from the underground under us too. Yeah, yeah. um that's that's been my my conclusion for a while with it um so so do you think that that uh i mean i got a couple questions on that but so mm. in regards to this week like disclosure happening and 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 just this bringing like my my thought is usually like how is the phenomena going to react to this accelerated disclosure like people are now like you're talking about consciousness like mm -hmm. for all of us that have been questioning this for a while there's not really a lot of stuff that's being revealed but for the grand no. for the the major part of society this is huge yep yep this is big and you know people are gonna have to unpack this for a while i mean i i kind of see this and in doing my sessions and doing kind of like look look forwards look backwards stuff like that you know it's it, it's going to have to work itself out in the next 10 years i mean just because of what has 
what is really coming out. I mean, we have a deal with, you know, the aspect of, I personally feel like a president that's kind of open to a uh, party in the white house on the Saturday is leaving the bag of Coke and then saying, Oh, it's not mine. You know, those types of people, um, you know, they're, they're, they know what's coming to them. I mean, I, 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 I think they all kind of know it <laughs> and they pray to something that's not so good and um, they're, they're going to get it. So that's kind of how I feel. Well, they pray to like Satan or ball or is that the same? Um, that's a thing. That's a thing. Um, those are, those are energies that are very old. So they are, they are different cycles had different, we'll call them jailers in that same sense. Um, I think this is kind of like a farm in a way and kind of a zoo all at the same time. Um, but they look for people that have that, that higher level to kind of, you know, Put out there but um but yeah the ball worship the um that aspect of it yep i think that's kind of where it's going um because you see i mean you look on on all the the social media channels and all the other places you're you're seeing it kind of come out but it's it's very it's very underlying it's very low line right now but it's 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 the i think the i think what cliff high talks about with his um his algorithm and stuff like that i think he's right he's pretty he's pretty close to it um, because that's that's what I was seeing in my in my you know stuff that I was doing in my personal journeys that I was doing for you know future future casting and stuff like that. So, so you think Jack Parsons and 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 Hubbard and these guys, uh, you know, brought, they were, brought, did they accelerate the UFO phenomena? Um, they they I think they did in a way. Um, I think Crowley had a part of it in a way, but I think Crowley was more of a uh, lead pipe and water scenario. Um, I think other people had their intentions, you know, man, or um, intentions wrong, or maybe, you know, I who am I to really judge at the end of the day? Um, but I think that had, I think that had a lot to do with it, um, because when you start looking and you start, you know, knocking on things, you start hearing things, you start finding things, um, and then it gets weirder from there on out. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know if this is the right place to talk about this, but I. I listened to the Brothers of the Serpent podcast with Marty, and Marty was going over his writings about how they did all the psi research, like going back in the 30s. I think it was even the 30s and 40s. So this is all before Roswell, before like modern ufology. But it was related to the CIA, and then the CIA kind of starting with NICAP. And and um, my sense was that – and I kind of heard this maybe decades ago too, like in the late 80s or early 90s, that – so I might be bringing up old memories of research, but my sense is, is that with the psi research and the, and the UFO phenomena and, and these government officials like doing uh, like research and, and mm. uh, experiments with it, realizing that there's a reality to that and we can manifest things ourselves. And reality is so fucking weird and so <laughs> crazy that they have to keep the fucking lid on that like the, yeah. the, this whole secrecy yeah. thing is about not letting us realize how fucking crazy and crazy malleable it is. reality it is. is it is it's it's crazy it is it's like, i think it's like, more like doctor who than people and, freaking realize and this I, I haven't seen doctor who so i don't know the oh you know the that's cia, all, the CIA yeah. come, like saying like our job will be done when every american what they believe is is false right like mm -hmm. it's like they just had to bring in this media full of fear and and doubt to keep us in this non-manifesting paradigm correct and that's what it is um because a lot of this stuff deals with you know, putting down the child um a lot of it deals with killing that child in that early stage in the mind and the soul all aspects of it we have been desensitized i grew up in the 80s and 90s and watching what culture has put in front of me and being a tv person for you know forever um, watching everything, movies, it's just, it's been thrown in our face and programmed. That's why they call it programming. It, you're, you're being programmed. So, you know, that, and that's, that's a big thing for it because, you know, you, you can utilize it too. You can really utilize it because when you understand what the programming is and how it breaks down, you, you see that there's winks and nods and everything. And you see, you see patterns to it too. And you're like, okay, I understand what this is. This is trying to say, I understand what this is trying to get to. Um, but that's, that's, you know, you have to be able to see the pattern. You got to be able to hear the pattern and you got to be able to see the wink and the nod. Um, because there's tons of TV shows out there that, that tell you this. And I think Chris Knowles actually breaks it down really, really well in that same sense. Um, so, you know, there's, there's other people out there doing that, that type of work 
you know, giving you the information. You just got to be able to, you know, hear it. I think at this point. Yeah. So do you think that the con- like the raising of our consciousness is going to beat the, the, uh, the tyranny that's happening right now? I mean, there, I um, feel like they're, they, they're, they're, I've seen a bunch of stuff in the last couple of days about reality, like splitting, like, yeah, people, like it's like completely splitting right now. And I feel like we're, we're going to go down this road. That's going to be longer than we think though. That's not going to yes. happen quick. I don't think where we split off and it'll end up in, in maybe a war or something eventually, but uh, it'll yeah, be a there's, long time leading up to that. Yeah, there is, there is. And there's a lot of um, things that are going to happen in between, between now and then personally that I've kind of looked at and seen and that that's going to be hard for a lot of people. It is. Like, it, like, I, like, like um, I think um, I hate to say it, but I don't I don't know if we talk about it on this, but like, you know, the, the, the vaccination is going to really yeah. hurt people. It really whoa, is. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those thoughts do not reflect the views and opinions of the Grand America show. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I forgot you guys were where you guys were. Do. Maybe they do. But we're not. We, I mean, I, um, but you're going to have to comment, you can edit that out here. We'll do that on the other show. Yeah, right. But yeah, so just but, just call it the the jab or something. You know? The jab, okay. So that that's gonna that's gonna really affect people. Um, I've seen it in in people around me. Um, I've seen it, you know, in a lot of other older folks right now, and that's what the big thing is gonna you know put a lot of people in jeopardy. Um, the bomb already went off, and it's it hurt a lot of people, and we're now just starting to see the the tip of the iceberg with that. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna get crazier. Um, there is, you know, a proper way to, you know, get this stuff out if you can, if you only took a few. Um, but like the, the other, you know, the long-term people that constantly got it there, it's, it's sad, but that's, what's going to happen. Um, and there's going to be a lot of it in that same sense. Um, plus, you know, a lot of, I, I, I think um, a lot of it's also going to be the breakdown of the mental aspect of, of people once they understand that, because, you know, yeah. there's going to be people that are going to react right all like right away. They're either going to, you know, do something themselves, do something to somebody else. And then there's going to be the depression aspect of it. And then there's going to be other forms of it that kind of roll down the line. Or, or they don't react and they double down and then it gets worse. Yeah. There's going to be some people holding on to that for dear life, you know? And that's that, that's that, that's that divide. That's that rub that we're going to experience in the same sense in the next few months and next year. So on, so on. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, hurdles and stuff like that. We're going to have to get through through as a society in that same sense, because, you know, we only have each other in that same, in that, in that aspect. When you really get, when you really get down into it, um, the universe is actually a pretty desolate place. And all we have is literally each other. Um, The society, the, the humanity, those aspects of it. And what we hold in the sense of our daily ritual, our daily ceremony to show appreciation to that, that's what's going to get us through. Um, because, you know, we we can't dwell on this this stuff because we got we in we got we got to rebuild a lot of things. <laughs> and that's what I was I was seeing, too. And it's going to be tough because it's starting to seem like it's accelerating to the point that an already stressed yeah, it was push. It feels like it was pushed through an extra bit in the back end, and it's just got gotten this shove lately. Um, and that's what that's what I've kind of seen too. It's like everything around time and space is kind of shaken loose. Um, and the old old things and old old things from the past are going to break away. Um, I think a financial system is going to be one of them. I think uh, government systems are going to be one of them too. Um, there's other little things that I've seen that I'm kind of waiting for my own confirmations for before I even start talking about them. <laughs> so. Oh, it's all coming down. Oh, yeah, I, I think it is, too. It, they're holding up the tower. They are they are holding up the tower with whatever they have, and the tower actually dropped about four or five months ago. So this is a big, big financial thing that is looming. I mean, we're it's, it's all bubble about the pop, and I'm just, you know, popcorn. Thus, the UFO disclosure right at yep. this time. I yep. mean, they really hurried that through, right? Since when yeah. did they do stuff that quick? They I mean, don't. They don't. I think what was it? Oh, what was the other thing that happened today? Um, uh, what's his face? I think what was it? Hunter McConnell? got indicted. Did Hunter well, got well, indicted? Well, McConnell or? also McConnell also had a stroke at the podium. Oh, is that what that was? I think that's what they're saying it was, or he or he glitched out. I don't know. Maybe the clone glitched out. I don't did know. you see that, Darren? Yeah. I seen the first one, and then I heard it happen again. 
Oh, I didn't know it happened again. Oh, I, I couldn't tell if it was just somebody like editing, like you know. Uh, you know, you can't can trust it. Touches him on the arm right before, like touch the, the second she touches him on the arm, he bet. The second <laughs> she touches him, I'm fucking Whoa. telling. You, go watch it, and you watch the video. And the second this fucking this broad, I don't know who she is, she fucking touches his arm, pick, like he's got a little button. Button there, off switch. Yeah. So there, there's, watch there's. Video, you tell me. Yeah, right. So there's there's questionable stuff all out there. I mean, I in the way of conscience, I see, you know, I see it from aliens, the clones, the ghosts, to spirit to everything's kind of coming out because everybody's looking into it. So it's manifesting all this stuff. Right, exactly. Bring it all up to the surface. It's it's the chaos aspect of it. Someone took a big big spoon called chaos and they dipped it into reality and they started stirring it up and this is what we got. So it's, it's, we're it's, it's we're going back to like the late 1800s when people believed in all this metaphysical shit before they clamped yeah. it down before materialism really took yeah. over after World War One. You know, well, it was all about alchemy. It was all about alchemy, and science was a part of alchemy in that same sense. And it was all an aspect of exploring the mind and the seven hermetic key principles. That's that's the that's the the big thing. You know, these are the key principles that rule and govern the universe. So I don't know if anybody's ever wa- uh, read the Kabbalion, but that's kind of the first and last book you should ever read in that same sense, because it teaches you everything that you need to know. Um, and that's you kind of where I go. You should just like read that and then stop reading. What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> like you should read it now and then again, right before you die or just read yeah, it. Yeah, I've read it. I mean, personally, I always kind of go back to it. I've read it about five times. It's not a big book. It's very short. I mean, even on like Audible, I think it's like four hours. It's like nothing. It's like for me. So like I I'll read it every once in a while and then I'll have a problem with one of the one of the concepts and how to apply it and I'll just reread it to get a to get a fr- refresher. Um, but then I mean it's it's very it's very basic you know seven key principles that you can apply to your everyday life that you can you can set forth you know from um, other ones I mean I was a I'm big Gordon White fan big big Gordon White fan um, love everything he does. Um, so that's that's a that's another one. Love the chaos magic stuff that he does and the stuff that um he decodes with uh Chris Knowles. I actually watched that one recently. That was pretty cool. I haven't seen that. Yeah, you, you go into it a good bit. I, I like their stuff. I like their style. Yeah. Oh, I love both of them, but I haven't seen the latest one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you should go oh, you should go on Rune Soup with someone. I think recently, so a few weeks ago, they uh, they hopped on together and they were doing one. Um, maybe maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I just recently watched it, um, but I thought it was a it was a recent one that they did. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think I saw that too, but I didn't yeah. watch it. Like I saw it. Come yeah. Out. So what are you? You're a fan of Chaos Magic, or do you? Are you? Yeah, 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 man. I um, personally, I utilize a lot of things. Um, that being one of them um to do what i need to do in my own stuff to set out my own intentions and in, in that sense so i i found shamanic tradition in that same sense and the hermetic principles and apply them with the chaos magic aspect of it to form my own manifestation tool so is that working how I- um, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> yeah. So that's um that's been the big thing is you know, trying is really working at you know the self stuff because that's that's where it all starts and ends is is in here. So if you can't connect to here, you you can't do anything. Um and that's that was the big part of why I kind of started on this path was because I had this this thing that happened to me that left a hole and left this black hole and I had to fill it and I had to fill it. And uh, I was filling it with the wrong things and I had to fill it with something that that gave me purpose and gave me um, something that, you know, wanted to get up in the morning and be appreciative of the air that's in my lungs, you know, that type of thing. Um, Because I think that's going to move us forward, um, you know, coming up with a lot of stuff that we're going to go through. Does that mean that I can blame my recent misfortune on Graham since he's having the worst week of his life? Hey, it bleeds, man. It I'm bleeds. Like, you gotta be able to I'm caught up in his tornado, I feel like. <laughs> you, you could. You could. You could. might that have could started it. I mean, you might have I mean, kicked him off. <laughs> and, that, and that happens in, in relationships, too. It's I mean, funny because I feel like I'm just at the tail end of a tornado <laughs> and his is just starting up. <laughs> right? And, and, and it could pass. You could pass it. <laughs> you can pass the, that stuff to people. You really can. And that's that's where you gotta you know draw the line and you know really show that you can clear yourself 
Um, you know, cause you can pass that to people. You gotta, you gotta be able to stop and you get caught up in it. I get caught up in life. It's, it's not a, it's not a, a thing where you're constantly out of time and space and you're looking at yourself and reviewing yourself. You're, you, you get caught up in it, man. Um, and you're, you're along for the ride because this is just an expression. This is ultimately just expression. We're here to entertain each other and learn and learn the life lessons that we're here to incarnate to. So that's um that's kind of what I've picked up in doing the whole idea of you know consciousness search searching and understanding the the hallucinogenic principles and and stuff like that. Well, how do you how do you discern between like just going with the flow and sort of trying to enjoy the ride between manifesting a new reality or cha- or changing your circumstances? You know, like sometimes sometimes um you you gotta be a, a, like a serenity a, prayer. Yeah. Right. And that, that, that happens, you know, I had a, had a moments, you know, where you kind of have to have that, that real talk with, the, with everything up there and, and down there and say, what, what you got to do something, <laughs> you got to do something. I put this, 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 and maybe it's something that you're, you're not even seeing. Maybe there's something that you have to change your perspective on to really go back over and do your work. I've missed stuff. I have missed stuff in my own personal work where I had to re go back over and see what I missed from a different angle, from a different, you know, and a lot of people, you know, talk about doing ancestor work and clearing your, your, your past traumas and all these other things from curses and stuff like that. You know, that, that's, that's a thing you're doing the meditation, going into your blood, going in and visiting your grandmother, your, your grandfather, seeing where they went wrong and how they pass it on to you and how you have to break it. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing you're here to break the cycle. So, and to break out of this kind of, I, I want to use des- the word destiny loop, but it's kind of a loop. It's a, it's a prismant loop. It's a mind loop. It's this um, brainwashing that they have you in. Um, it's all these aspects that they kind of throw on top of you that kind of blind you from the real aspect of reality, which is, which you only see one, one billionth of. So there's other people out there that, that see this stuff, that experience this stuff. And I think it's because they are a little bit more open and more attuned to what is out there in conscious space. Does psychedelics have, ha, help with that process? Or? Yes, yes, they do. I think they do. I think it's a way of us training in a way, and 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 not. I mean, I think it's it's a healing process with them, um, but it's also a way to you know become a you know psychic warrior in that same sense of you know being you know mentally fit. You know, being energetically fit and being a whole person and a whole soul. Um, I think a lot of this aspect is driven through the soul. So you you have soul, spirit, and your physical vessel in that same sense. And soul and spirit, two different things. Spirit is the OS, the operating system. Soul is the power source, the reporter, all these other things. And you can access information through it. So it shouldn't be any different than the technology, I think, than, than what they're using, because it's more of a soul based technology, I think, than, you know, mental aspects, too. And if you have these different pieces of your soul that are broken off through the trauma aspect, I think that's where they have a rub of where they kind of um, they don't work as well. <laughs> and I think it's where also they had to introduce the idea of hallucinogenics to kind of, you know, put this whole, you know, um, what is it? I guess this this uh, bloom of consciousness out there. Um, because that's what they wanted, you know, they being the, the government and that's the same sense the people that wanted, you know, people to operate the technologies, but didn't know how. So I, I think those, those are the big key aspects of, of what's kind of going out there. It's like an initiation in a way, you know, cause it's just, it, like it is. They, they warned, they warned us back in the 1800s not to get into this stuff unless we knew what we were doing. Right. So. And that's where you get into a lot of the the old aspects of, you know, uh, consciousness in the sense of, you know, these angels, these jinn, these lower keys, um, a lot of the, uh, the magic in dealing with that stuff is how to root your brain and your mind into those those keys and how to follow those maps. That's what they are. They're really maps, they're road maps, a lot of them. Um, to manifestation. So, um, wow. yeah. Awesome. Darren, you got any questions before we wrap it up? 
No, I guess uh, no. I don't think so. I mean, I'm, it all makes sense. I never thought of putting the manifestation and the mushrooms together, but maybe I'll try it out. I mean, I got. Yeah, and it, it do. I mean, the big aspect is your ritual. It's a standard operating procedure. It really is. I, I've listened to you guys enough to know that Darren is is a person who's who's done it a few times. So it's really the standard operating procedure to how you do it. So you set the time, you set the setting, you have all these things in place, and you create you know, the safe space, you create these, these aspects, but, you know, you have these other tools um, to do them. And it's not just necessarily the mushrooms. It could be clearing yourself with Palo Santo, sage, whatever, you know, putting out there in written and physical word of what you want with it, you know, doing the, the actual ingesting and, you know, sitting down, relaxing and doing meditation and letting it you know, come to you. Yourself, then? Um, you can, I mean, you probably, I mean, I you've done it. In, camper out into the woods and like, Hey, you know what? And that's the thing, you know, when you're by yourself, that's when the things come out. I mean, I hate to say in that sense, but when you're ready to do that, that's when the things come out because then you start understanding what's really below us, what's above us and stuff like that, because you're willing to put yourself in that space, but you have to be ready. You have to be willing to, you have to be ready to protect yourself. You have to be ready to do that because, you know, that, you know, hyperspace is, it, it, it can be dangerous. <laughs> it can really be dangerous and you can hurt yourself and you can hurt other people around you. Um, that's why I say, you know, you should always do your first time with, uh, you know, someone and, you know, have these other protection things, you know, in your, in your medicine bag in that same sense. Well, it's about like hunting season is just starting up for me. Bow season, deer now, antelope later. <laughs> antelope are out in the prairies. There's no bears. So maybe I'll just eat a bunch yeah. of mushrooms and go walk around with my bow and arrow. Yeah. I don't know if I can't really hurt anybody. I can't really hurt myself. But, you know, I always, I where I live, I have an amazing view of the sky. So, like, I love looking at the stars. And you see some crazy, crazy stuff where I am. Uh, over the past few months, past few years. There's where are been, you? I'm in Maryland, um, about an hour north of D.C. Oh, I was just out in, uh, I don't know, where were we? We were in... Uh, Virginia, Virginia. Oh yeah, it's about two hours. We're a little bit more about. Yeah, we're the opposite side of DC, I think, where people just run into each other while each yeah. other's cars. Yeah, Arlington, are... Arlington's like right there on the other side of DC. That's we where... were in no uh, further Rich... down from there. Rich... Yeah, yeah, Richmond. Okay, but yeah, that's um, that's a little bit of a hike, but yeah, we're um, we're 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 right on the line, the Pennsylvania lines. So we're out in the middle of nowhere, so I don't have a lot of light pollution and uh. When you're doing this in sessions like that in those environments where you're really cut off from a lot of the things they do they do come out and um you have to you have to feel the energies i mean a lot of times they won't show themselves they want to meet you halfway you know that's the that's the agreement you're coming in halfway i'm going to come this far you're going to come this far and we're going to talk um just be aware that it is a two-way street in the same sense that they, they just as much as you can hurt them they can hurt you so that's where discernment comes in. That's where, you know, having someone there that has experienced these other things with you is always a good positive thing to have. We were just down on our USA road trip and we stopped uh, Bruno Sand Dune State Park out oh. in, uh, as just a couple hours south of Boise, Idaho. And the stars there were something else. I mean, we just see something nonstop. We just, Sit with the kids on the, yeah. have the tunnel cover on the truck so you can all lie on that with a blanket. And it's just one thing after another. My youngest yeah. really into it. Just oh, look at that one's flashing, that one's moving, that one's. Yeah. And we see a lot of that the flash bulbs. Uh, we were out there for a good three nights in a row and it was just nothing but flash bulbs. Boom, 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 all over the place. Um, really trying to understand what's going I, I, I'm okay. under the impression that 90 per well, about 85 to 90 percent of it's ours. And then there bulbs? is, yeah, well, that and you know, about 10% is probably 10 to 5% is like other things. What, what do you think about flash bulbs? Like 90% of the flash bulbs, or what do you think? Of flash I, I, bulbs think the, I think, the, I think flash bulbs, um, I think they kind of reside the line of, you know, questionable is it something other? Because a lot of the stuff that I see that looks to be drone stuff like that you can really easily pick out um i've seen actually i've seen i think i've seen and i don't know for sure to be honest with you because i caught up the back end of it um but a tr3b it was a black triangle with this like violet blue light like in the center of it and it was it was 
going across my backyard. And by the time I saw I got out, I just saw the tail end of it. And that was it. Um, there's also been ones where I've seen where they became in really low. They were red and white. There were two of them on one night um, when I was dealing with something really bad in the house. And then um, they came out. And then another night, my wife and I were out on our deck and uh, I noticed another one. Um, there's been, there's, there's been a lot, I've seen a lot up near or around where we live. And I don't know if it's, if it's me or if it's where we live, or if I'm just looking up in the sky and I'm noticing it because I'm one of those people that's always looking. So it's, it could be a combination of things, but I, I kind of have a knack for picking them out. Right on. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. This has been great. Michael, where can our listeners track you down? What's your, um, your yeah, uh, well, your- socials no well we have a bit of socials going on um we're we just uh, kind of started everything up so we're really new to this and like i was telling uh, graham we kind of wanted to make a splash so what i do in the business is do a lot of the clearing work uh, my wife does a lot of the reiki work so when we go and do stuff uh, for healing in that same sense um we use this as a tool in that in that way the psychedelics and that's how we you know help you heal um, with these things, I do ushers where I'll pull people in, pull an ancestor, pull in these things and be that that bridge for the for the person to communicate, stuff like that. Um, a lot of the times we're going to be found at Andromeda Joy 22 on Instagram and me, um, New World Shaman on Instagram. That's all we have right now. Um, we're all building it from uh, from scratch again. So um, we uh, we're just putting ourselves out there. And uh, I wanted to come on with you guys. I listened to you guys for a while and, see, and I just kind of randomly reached out to Graham and was like, Hey, you want a rando on the, I, on the show? I random, randomly responded and said, yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. And it was like, you were like, Oh, I'm going to go with my intuition on this, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's awesome. so I'm glad I, I had a lot of fun talking to you guys talking about the weird stuff. I always talk, I love talking about the weird, weird stuff, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's some rhyme and reason to what we do in that same sense, because it's, um, it's kind of a crazy world out there in the conscious world. And you have to be um, you have to first take care of yourself in that same sense and find yourself. Yeah. So to be able to do that, um, we utilize tools, ritual and ceremony. Um, my wife does the Reiki and uh, that's what we kind of bring it all home with. So right on. Thanks, buddy. This has been great. No, I had a, I had a blast. This was this is blue by like nothing. Yeah, no kidding. Goes so, right on. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do it again sometime. sometimes. Sometimes it's like fucking pulling teeth. Trust me. I, I don't doubt it. I've I've been on the other side of it. I've produced and I understand it. I spent twenty years in the in the film production industry, so like I get it. Especially when they say something, you're just like, "What the fuck?" Is <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be a long ninety. Yeah, I, I've I've seen a few of them, so I, I I pay attention to the shows and I I I gravitate to the to the good stuff. So. Right on. Well, Thanks, this was one of those good ones. I think the listeners will like it. Thanks for coming cool. on the show, Michael. Come back anytime. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. And that was our chat with Michael H. Ryder the second. Is it the two for the second? Uh, yeah, it must be, yeah. Nice. I wish I was the second. I should have another kid. Just, just make like yourself three. a second. You can just be you I should have another kid. Just, just identify as the fourth. It'd probably be another girl though. That'd be about my life. <laughs> are you gonna? Are you and Sean gonna have? Is that? Nah, is that what you're saying? Nah, oh, okay, okay. We're pretty old. Uh big thanks to Michael for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Uh, even bigger thanks if you're a supporter. I mean, Graham's having the worst week of his life ever. I mean, you guys hear that? That's some sad shit. Support the show, America.ca slash support. He's got the rug getting pulled out from under him. We'll getting bills stacked up on top of them. I know the feeling because I'm his business partner. So uh, it's been, it has been a bit of a trying week over here to keep the good vibes, good vibing. But uh, we'll figure it out. We always figure it out. But it's going to be a tough couple of months while we do readjust and reevaluate. Um, you know, if we, we, we got to get that audio bit income back somehow it looks like we have some different avenues of maybe getting you know somewhere between 30 percent and 85 percent of it back over time but it looks like there's going to be at least a month or two in between and and, uh, uh, and then uh, and then at the same time everything else is just fucking going out of control so that's very that's strange it. i mean i mean my week when i when i got sober is probably you know i mean that might be 
that might be neck and neck for the worst week, you know, or, or my bet. I mean, you know, it followed by my best week probably after that, but so maybe think, next week will be our, my best week. I don't know. There you go. There you go. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if they didn't decide not to pay us like three days before payday. Yeah. Yeah. With a, a month that you need it the most, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's like it counts on all my, most of my bills, but anyway, yeah. You can use you can come live in my tent trailer if you need to anytime. Thanks. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh we love you guys. Grandmarket.ca slash support. If you're wondering how to support, I mean we did I uh because some people don't like PayPal, they don't like Stripe, so this is what I did. I monetized, I turned on the monetization for the Grand American newsletter. So you can go there and Oh, sign that's up a good idea. Eight bucks a month or 80 bucks a year. Or I think there's a custom or a founder or whatever, but you can basically go there and can sign up with that and oh, not that's be affiliated a good idea. with any of those other things. You can just go straight to your credit card, I believe, is how that all works. So that's grimerica.substack.com if you want to get into that. But uh, And our other shows on Substack, too, if you want to mention that. Grimerica Outlawed. That's and I am on Twitter, so Grimerica Outlaw head. on Twitter. I mean, yeah. Don't they look fucking sharp? Yeah, follow I'm me sharp. on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I'm going out tomorrow. Okay. The weather dumping? You should be out with your little bow and arrow. This is, I mean, this is your season in your eye patch. You get you a camo eye patch. No? No, I can't. I got too much going on. I can't even. I got to fix my life right now, so. All it right, might guys. be good for it. it. Might be good for it, I don't know. dude. It would be good for it. Then we could fill up your freezer with meat. I seen a last time when I shot that uh, last week when I shot that that white tail. I shoot another white tail. I'd really, you know, one more. I didn't. It wasn't big enough to get enough. I got so much pork left from that pig I shot that uh, I got to get turned into sausage that I need like 300 pounds of venison and then I'm going to make like 500 pounds of sausage. Wow, that's great. And then I'll give you like 100 pounds. All right, thanks, buddy. So, all right, guys. Love you, motherfuckers. Thanks for listening and we will see you next week. You're fussing, you're fighting when you come around won't be enough I'm bored Just one kiss Will roll me over Drive me to both sunsets Just one Nighttime drops and she falls. And the creeps and the crawls of the night on a wrong turn down the road.
Just. <laughs>